The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Hey, Kara Oosterhaus here with realagriculture.com. It is time now for another Canola School episode. I recently had the opportunity to catch up with Lyle Jensen, who's an agronomist with Agro Plus. Lyle and I talk about grasshoppers. It has been a dry and windy and hot year across the prairies, and we all know that is something those grasshoppers really seem to enjoy. Lyle and I chat about grasshoppers specifically in canola. Now, you might think, you know, that it attacks your cereals and doesn't like your canola crop, but trust me, it does. So check out this video where we talk about what you need to know about grasshoppers in your canola and what sort of options you might have when it comes to controlling them. Yeah, so as we've basically been in drought conditions here with the heat, the grasshoppers have been pretty rapidly expanding their territory out of the ditches and some of the graze land here. Beside us is some graze land that's basically been burned off in the heat as well as been grazed. So now the grasshoppers are in the ditch. They've pretty much finished off a lot of the luscious grass in there and they're starting to move into the canola. And the canola is not really a preferred food source for the grasshoppers, but as you can see, they are fully capable of stripping it down. They've even taken a lot of the green off of the stem and chewed entire side branches off. And we basically, we came in here, we did spray a group 28 insecticide about seven days ago. And that is having an effect on the grasshoppers as they move into the field. It's basically just forming a barrier along the edge of the field. And it, it, it's a little bit more effective on crawling, jumping grasshoppers, the nymph stage, than it is on the adults. The adults can fly over that barrier. Basically, we just sprayed the outside headland with it. A group one or a three is a little bit faster of a result, especially over the ditches, if you can burn off most of the adults, but there's no meaningful residual. So if the grasshoppers are flushing, or in this case, coming off grazeland, it's not always the best option. Ecobran is also another good option, one of the, the baits. So now if you're looking in your canola field and you are actually seeing, like you said, it's not their preferred source, but they will really decimate that canola. What, what can feeding really look like? The feeding will mostly be on the tender green parts of the plant. So right now at this stage of the canola, a lot of the feeding is on the leaves, but as those leaves start to drop off later on or young tender pods develop, they will go after those pods. And quite often in canola, what happens is those pods can be some of the last green on the plant. So later in the season when that graze land and the grassland is really burned off, the grasshoppers will move in and they'll strip the pods off the top of the plants. So can you talk about the different types of feeding? We have the migratory grasshopper and the two-stripe grasshopper are kind of the most prominent. The feeding does look a little different. Do you want to touch on that? Yeah, the two-stripe grasshopper typically will take long strips off of the pods. They'll feed in a line, whereas the migratory grasshopper will kind of just take a chunk. The end result is basically the same. It'll compromise pod integrity, and if they're hungry, they'll eat the seeds right out of the pod. So now when we're looking at making that consideration on spraying, what sort of thresholds are out there? The thresholds are going to vary depending on the condition of your crop. You know, this canola might, you know, be maybe 30 bushels if we're lucky on dry land. So, I mean, threshold is basically going to be, like in this case, along the edge of the field, the damage is severe. It's worth spraying the headland. If it was the entire field situation, you'd probably be looking for seven to 10 grasshoppers per square meter. Okay, and are you sweeping for those or you're just looking within this, the square meter? I'm just looking within the square meter. I'm a pretty big guy. My steps are almost exactly one meter. So if I hold my hands out roughly three feet apart or a meter apart and take a step and I see five to seven grasshoppers jump between my arms, I know I'm at threshold. Okay, absolutely. And anything else you would like to recommend to producers if they are seeing those grasshoppers, even later on in the season, that it they, they can still cause issues in that adult stage? Yes, it is never too late. Even in cereals, when you're approaching ripening, quite often they can still take the heads off the plants a week before you're combining. So watch your thresholds. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm.